I'm Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects. In a previous tutorial, we looked at starting with expressions in Silhouette. In this one, we're going to take things a little bit further, and I'm going to show you how we can start to use some basic Python math and Python functions to start creating more intricate effects with expressions and even auto animate. Now, because we have this Python math opened up to us, if you're not scared of a little bit of maths, we can start to create some quite interesting type of uh, type of looks. So let's uh, let's take a little uh, look here. I'm going to do the uh, little trick we did previously. So lock up my node window here on this one, and I'll take my second one and bring this over here and come over to my color correct. So I want to be able to link the position of my circle here to a color. Uh, so maybe we'll just actually look up on the color correct and come over here. Probably the easiest place to show this is going to be on temperature. So we can, you know, move our temperature plus and minus to get it going from cyan to, to yellow. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to link up my position here over to the temperature. So if I just come down and I'm going to try and drag my position over to temperature, uh, and it's not going to let me do it. Uh, it will let me drag in aspect or any of the other ones here. So radius, it will let me drag those on, but it won't let me drag position. Uh, and the reason for that is that position has multiple dimensions to it. It's not like just a single parameter. It's, it's got, it's, it's an array of values. So we can come in and we can choose just one value here. Let's move this over here so we can see this. Okay, so if I come to my position and just click on the three dots and go copy expression reference, come over to my temperature, turn on expressions, and then just paste that in with control or command V. Uh, so it brings us in radial gradient to dot position. So how do I know uh, what these other values are going to be called. Well, simple. If I just hold over the top of them, we get a little tooltip. So X is surprisingly called X and Y is called Y. So if I come down back into my temperature and I go radial to dot position dot X, you'll see the warning light goes away again, which means I now have a valid expression. So if I drag this over, stuff should start to happen. But why isn't it? Well, the reason for that is that my position is going all the way up to, you know, 1160. Uh, and temperature as a value locks up, has a hard max at 200. Uh, and that isn't what we want anyway. What we want is it for it to change color as it moves away from the center of the uh, canvas. So how do we do that? Well, we can use another property. And that property is going to be called the session width. So instead of looking at a value in a node, we can also look at other values that are going on within the project. So for example, the session size. So if I go now minus session, let's move my cursor out of the way, uh, and session dot width, we now get a valid expression again. And let's see, well, something's happening. So as I go all the way over to the to the edge, you know, something's definitely happening because at the outer edge there, it's going to hit zero. All right, so that's that's hitting the session width, which is we have a look at the session size, session settings, session width is 3840. So how do we find the center of that? Well, the middle of what's the middle between zero and 3840? Well, it's 1920. So it's, it's kind of the session width divided by two, that's going to be the center. So I can go divided by two. So session width divided by two. So now if we get into the center point, we're going to be white 
And if we go a little bit over to the right, it's going to go yellow, a little bit over to the blue, uh, left. Let's try again. If we go a little bit over to the left, it's going to turn yellow, a little bit over to the right, it's going to turn blue. All right, but it's moving very fast. So how do we change that? Well, let's come in, wrap all of these up in here in parentheses, and then I can just do another divided by, uh, what should we do now? Divide, let's divide it by 10, we'll see how we get on with that. There we go. So now as we move over to the right, it turns blue a bit slower and over to the left it turns yellow a bit slower if that's not slow enough we just change that value from 10 to 20 and that's going to take a little bit longer to turn and change color that's all well and good that's kind of fine let's um let's copy this i'm just going to have this all selected and i'm just going to do control or command c uh, and copy that uh, and let's pipe this into our blur. So let's turn on expressions on the blur, paste that in. Let's see what happens. As I move over to the right now, it's starting to blur out. But if I move over to the left, it's staying very, very unblurred. Uh, and the reason for that is fairly straightforward. Uh, let's let's actually have blur as the one we've got locked in here and a radial gradient is the one we're changing now we take a look at the blur value we take it to the right it goes up so we get a positive value which means we're starting to blur out if we go to the left we're into a negative value and of course blurs can't have a negative value i mean it goes it's it's got a uh, a fixed floor of zero so what could we do to take this value here and make sure that it always returns a positive number it's actually fairly straightforward again uh, we're going to use one more bit of python math uh, another python function which is abs abs so it's absolute and then i'm going to wrap everything that we have here in more parentheses just to make sure that we get everything we want. So what this does, what the abs does, is it returns the absolute value. So if it's a positive value, we get a positive value. It's, if it's a negative value, we get a positive value. So now if I drag this over to the right, it's gonna blur up. If I drag it over to the left, it's also gonna blur up. So you can see that our, our blur now, where the actual value that was re returning before was minus 67 66 because of the abs here in the expression that's flipping it around to make sure that we get a positive number and there's a ton of fun stuff like that that we can do with you know python functions and i'm just going to show you this one uh, because this is how we can get a wiggle going on on our position so again just using uh using python math so i'm just going to paste this in it's a little bit tricky to see this longer expression. So if I just hit the down arrow, let's expand this out so we can see this even better. This one here says 0.3D, which means that we're dealing with a point. Um, so position is a point, 3D. Open parentheses, sine, so we're gonna generate up a sine wave. And then frame times two times pi, divided by 180, times five, times a thousand plus sine, to, uh, open brackets frame times one so that frame times one means that we've got a auto animating value happening here so we're dealing with time to do auto animating for us uh, actually frame times 1.5 times pi divided by 180 times 18 times 300 <laughs> it's a lot of time things uh, so let's let's play back what all that means and all this is doing actually at the end of it is we're just using a little we're creating a little sine wave up uh to do a bit of a wiggle for us so this is our our home homegrown home rolled uh wiggle expression uh which is kind of fun 
Uh, and it's basing this off of time, obviously, which is why we've got the frame in there. Otherwise, we'd have to have some other animating number for it to actually move. And there's a lot of other fun things that you can do with these. And we're going to start to package these up and uh, and show off some of these as well. This may even be a good time to, you know, plug the Discord server as well, the Boris FX Discord server. Uh, we'll put a link in the description for this just to, you know, go somewhere to, to kind of find the community as well. Um, Silhouette Forums, the Boris FX uh, Silhouette Forums is also going to be another great resource for these. The penultimate example that I want to show here is just uh, to show you how we can start to uh, use expressions to help us uh, not have to think about uh, certain interactions between different nodes. So if we take a look at this setup here, I've got my Mocha Pro, which has got a power mesh going over the, uh, the face, as we can see here. And this is a very standard way uh, of coming in and using the power mesh warp to unwarp the face so that we can uh, paint on it or do whatever we want to do just on a, a still frame essentially or a uh, you know a locked off shot essentially and then come in you know we've got a grid here and then come in and then re-warp this afterwards now the power mesh warp is fairly straightforward there's actually only three controls to it uh, so from a user point of view we don't have to really do a lot but if we do forget some of the setup, we can end up uh, you know, causing problems for ourselves or basically not just getting the, the best quality out of what we, uh, out of what we want. So we've only got like, we've got a mesh drop down, which tells us what mesh we're going to be taking. Uh, we can't add expressions to this one. Uh, we've got a mode, which is either going to be warp or unwarp. And we've got precision, which is going to be draft normal or best. Now, if we have a mismatch between the precision mode of the, the uh, unwarp and the warp, we could end up with a misalignment of the, uh, the stuff that we've put in the middle. So I'm, I'm just going to show you this. So we've, we've got our power mesh uh, one at the top set to draft, our power mesh two at the bottom also set to draft. So let's just capture that. And now if I set my power mesh warp up the top to best. And we're still looking at the power mesh warp at the bottom that's still set to draft. Let's take a little look at what happens here. If I just do a before and after. You can see those pixels are are moving, so we don't want that. We want to lock those two together. And what better way of doing that than with expressions? So if I come up to power mesh uh, warp one, let's lock this up. Let's come to power mesh two, add in another node viewer, parameter viewer, and make sure that my mesh warp one, that precision is going to be locked over on mesh warp two as well. So now both of these are set to best. So if I set one to draft, the other one goes to draft. So I said it's normal, it goes to normal. So we can be sure that there's not going to be a mismatch between these two here. Now, if we wanted to get a bit tricky about it, I mean, actually, we probably wouldn't do it with this, this particular case, but I'm going to show you this anyway, just because I think this is kind of interesting for any drop downs. We can actually come in and we can, you know, make one node do the uh, an alternate selection on a uh, on a drop down. So if I take my mode here, drag this over. At the moment, they're now both set to unwarp. So we've got an unwarp on top of an unwarp. But if I wanted to reverse this, we just have to go multiply by minus one. So we just need to offset this with plus one. And so now when this mode is set to unwarp, this mode is set to warp. And if we set it opposite, this mode is set to warp, this one's going to set to be set to unwarp. 
like I said, this doesn't make sense in this particular setup because we always want our unwalked to be at the top. But I think it's just interesting how we can uh, use expressions on drop down menus and, you know, Boolean choices here to uh, to start to, you know, link things and, and, and make sure that stuff stays in sync. OK, so these are just a few things that we can begin to do with expressions and scripting. And if you're interested in, in learning more, then I would definitely take a look at the user guide as our first port of call. It's got a whole section about expressions and some of the syntax with it. Also tells you the difference between normal scripting as well. But if we take a look at some of the actions, specifically things like the motion blur controller, you can begin to see how we can start to mix scripting and expressions together. So if you want to take things further in that direction, we also have the scripting guide, which you can easily find by clicking on customization guide, and that will lead us into the wiki where you can go straight to the scripting guide. I hope you found this useful and I hope it's given you a few ideas as well about how you can start to integrate expressions into your Silhouette work. If you want to be part of the bigger Silhouette community, then I do invite you to come over to the forums at the Boris FX website or join us on our Discord server. And of course, you'll find links for both of those in the description of this video. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects. I'll see you in another Silhouette tutorial very soon.